Hi everyone and welcome to the studio in sunny Gibraltar. Today we're going to be photographing a Honda Monkey. That's a classic motorbike, not a primate. But before I continue with this, I just want to have a big shout out to our sponsors at Pixapro. Say thank you very much for getting in touch over lockdown. We're going to be producing some videos together and hopefully you'll enjoy them as much as we did in creating them. So for all the videographers and photographers out there, check out their website and all the equipment we use in studio today will all be linked down below. In the video today, we're going to be going through a step-by-step -step guide on how to create this image. Like all photo shoots, it's important to do your research and get a rough idea on how you want to take the photograph. Personally, I find Pinterest gives me plenty of options. Here you can see plenty of different styles of motorbikes that have been photographed. Some of them are diffused, some of them are hard lights, some of them are outdoors on location, and some are in the studio. So before you get going with your own product shoot, make sure you do as much research as you can and understand the lighting setup that you want to use before you begin. So like every model that's in the studio, you need to make sure their hair and makeup is on point. But with motorbikes, it's all about chrome and polish. Make sure you give the bike a good clean and remove any unwanted grease. For this shoot, we decided to use a grey paper backdrop. This is a neutral colour which complements the bike, which was predominantly black and white. It also helps that we're going to use an orange gel as a backlight to separate the bike from the backdrop. The first light that we're going to be setting up is the City 600 Pro. On this light, we're using an orange gel. This is to match the decals of the logo on the bike itself. One of the absolute best things about Pixar Pro's flash system is that they all operate under the one system. The background light is set to manual and placed low down on an improvised tripod to stay out of the image. Like all controlled lighting environments, it's very important that you make sure that your base image will be completely black, ensuring that no ambient light affects the subject. So I selected channel D for the background light and here you can see that we've got this really lovely orange glow punching out into the background and creating a lovely silhouette. One of the main problems with backlights is that sometimes the light bleeds onto the subject and here you can see that it's just come onto some of the chrome work at the back of the bike. Hence, make sure you have the right power setting. Now that we have the background light in place, we're going to move ahead and set up the main key light. I chose to diffuse the key light in order to create a more softer feel of light over the top of the motorbike. I used two light stands with clamps and held the diffuser in place. When using an overhead studio light, it's very important that you make sure it is secure. Pixar Pro have a variety of different C stands. C stands are one of the best investments in any studio. For the key light, I am using a Pixar Pro Storm 600 II. The main difference between this and the City 600 Pro is that it needs to be connected to the mains. So here's a tip for you. When you are connecting a modifier to a light, make sure to take off the light from the light stand and connect it to the modifier while it's on the ground. This prevents any unwanted damage or potential breakages in the studio. The key light modifier in this image is a 160 strip box. This is just about the right size to make sure that it covers the motorbike from front to back. If I was shooting a larger motorbike, I'd probably want to use two of these lights to ensure a complete spread across the image. Due to the nature of using an overhead light, make sure that you have the settings correctly dialed in before you put the light into position. So here you can see the lights are set to manual. Here you can see that the key light has had a very soft effect running along the top of the motorbike. However, it is slightly underexposed and therefore we will need to increase the power output to elevate that light. Turning up the power output of that key light has given the base exposure more vibrancy and dynamics. You can see that the leather on the seat is now looking super nice. You can see that the chrome is also reflecting nicely but it is not overexposed. 
This is actually very important when photographing Chrome. Make sure not to overexpose the image. It is also fair to say that the front and rear of the motorbike still need to be worked on, but we're gonna to get to that shortly. Here, we just brought the light slightly closer to the camera, and by doing so, the center of the light was actually falling down the front of the bike, which illuminated the chrome that little bit more and really brought the bike to life. You can really see the detail in the paintwork starting to pop. In order to illuminate the rear of the motorbike, I'm bringing in a small circular reflector. A simple reflector to the rear of the bike is bouncing light from the key light straight into the image. This is lifting the detail of the chrome work in particular, bringing life to parts of the image which the key light by itself was not able to do. Now that we've dealt with the rear of the bike, let's move over to the front. As you can see, the headlamp and the front mudguard are a little bit underexposed. We could use an additional light to do that, but in this setup, we're only using the two lights and we're going to therefore use another reflector. This particular reflector is homemade, but there are plenty of other options on the Pixar Pro website. So you can see the result here of the reflector has done a great job of just bringing to life that headlamp and also the front mudguard has become a little bit more vibrant. Lastly, in order to bring out the details in the engine and lower part of the bike, I use the cover of a five-in-one reflector on the white side on the floor. This elevates the shadows and brings out all the details. Don't forget, it doesn't have to be a five-in-one reflector. You could use a white sheet, piece of card or something. Just make sure it's big enough to stretch along the entire bike. This will bring out lots of details which previously were not seen. I personally really like this touch, although it has to be said it is not essential. As you can see, the five-in-one reflector is in the image. However, not to worry. This image will only be used in post selecting the areas of the bodywork which have been illuminated. I think you will agree the effect that it has is absolutely stunning. Okay, so we've now completed the shot. Let's get to the editing. So here it is, the final image the Honda Monkey Classic motorbike in all its little but beautiful glory. So last of all, don't forget any of the equipment that you've seen today, check out the links below. Pixar Pro have an amazing website with everything that you need to take your photography to the next level. Okay, and lastly, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and comment below. Any questions, I'd love to see them. See ya.